welcome back. Steve Basic Architect here. Yeah, we are continuing on with our Passive House 11 series. The reason we're calling it 11 is we certified this house in 2011. Yeah, we're in our 11th episode here, so if you haven't seen the first 10, I suggest, hey, go back in time, watch a few of them, catch up, watch them. They are designed to be kind of links in a chain so um, you can certainly watch them individually and still have some takeaways but it is certainly better if you watch them kind of in sequence and uh, it just helps to understand it so um, today we're actually going to take it through the roof so we're going to talk about the roof frame here um, you can see it there this is what's called a Dutch hip. All right, so it's a hip roof that goes up and there's a gable up here. So we have uh, that going on and then of course we have this low roof which actually has a little bit of a Dutch hip return there that we're going to talk about and we can even talk a little bit about that roof back there. Now roofs they're very important because from a water management perspective, right? Remember my three words, protection, mitigation, and prevention. Um, roofs are pretty much the ultimate protection. And you can see that. We have a two foot overhang here that's gonna protect the wall. We have it there. We have it here, and we have it heavily in there. It turns the corner there, and even that little roof. So when you look at this, we have all of these windows. And this is a coastal environment, people. The ocean is literally right out in here. Um, and you have all of these windows. And guess what? They are all protected, right? That's what the roof does. It protects and it creates longevity. Remember, if it don't last, it don't matter. We can build all the passive houses we want, make them super energy efficient, R100 walls, you name it. If the thing rots away because of a flashing detail or no roof overhang, no protection, no mitigation for water management, what have we really done, right? We've assembled a bunch of trash that we're going to put in the dumpster in no time. So get that roof, get a substantial roof on it, and protect. All right, let's press on. Roof framing plan. Pretty simple. Not a whole lot of magic. You can see all of the trusses are laid out. Wooden roof trusses, 24 inches on center. We have that laid out here. And you can see we have the walls below. We have the two by six fascia rough frame that we're calling out here. And that makes up that two foot zone. We're gonna highlight it in blue, but that is our zone of protection. All right, some other parts about the roof framing plan. We have our hip trusses, we have jack trusses, we have a girder truss here. The reason we call it a girder truss is because all of these, whoa, all of these jack trusses, man, all of these jack trusses are bringing load into that girder truss and then it's bringing it to there. In this case, the header. Um, notice all the headers. All the headers are called out there. Seven and a quarter. We have seven and a quarter there. Um, <clears throat> notice that the rake overhang on that Dutch hip is also called out. Eight inch rake up there and eight inch rake up there being called out. All the headers are delineated 
on the plan here. But yeah, not a whole lot of magic to a roof framing plan. And part of it is they're pretty simple drawings, but we have to create this so that I have an understanding as the architect where everything is going, how the different components interact. And I ship this off to the builder who then turns around and sends it to the truss manufacturer who's actually responsible for making the trusses. And so along with that, I always send truss elevations with my drawings. And the truss elevations, they're not telling the truss manufacturer what to build. They're providing the dimensions of what they need to design and build are, right? So we put the note in there that this is for illustrative purposes. The truss manufacturer is actually responsible for the actual configuration. They're responsible for the different web members. They're responsible for the truss plate sizes, all of that stuff. They have their intricate um, truss design software, the loads that are going to be coming down on here, the deflection in the bottom cord. They're responsible for all of that, meeting the code. But I like to give them the out-to-out -out dimension, what we're supporting this with dimension. In this case, it's a two by six wall, 26 foot four, out-to-out. -out. Um, notice that we have a three and a half inch soffit below the cord. We have one foot, 10 and a half to the rough two by six fascia, which totals a full two feet. Once we add that on, and again, that is our protection, right? The water's going to do this. It's not going to be able to get up in here, right? It's going to drip down here, and we're going to have that two feet of protection. The other uh, tidbit is the pitch of the roof. In this case here, 8 and 12, sometimes it's written like this. And what that basically means is it rises 8 inches for every 12 inches of run. Run is a horizontal dimension, 8 inches is the rise. So, there you have it. And that's our truss drawing. We would ship that off and the truss manufacturer would come back with a far more elaborate shop drawing showing all the plates, different loading conditions, etc., etc. And I'll take their shop drawing and compare it to all the dimensions that I put in basically as a request to make sure that there's nothing has changed, nothing um, is different. Occasionally, if we're doing something of a little more complex, I'm putting a truss elevation in with the hope that we could do it that way. Sometimes it comes back and says, yeah, we really can't do that. We need to move this down two inches, make this slope slightly <coughs> less steep, and, uh, and then we can make that work. So we kind of come to terms there. Um, remember on that first slide where we showed both roofs, this is nothing more than that lower roof. So here is the house below. <coughs> and then we have our return there and our overhang here with our return. <coughs> and um, you can see in this case here, because we have a front porch, we have our beam called out there, double two by 10. We have two by 10 rafters here. Um, we have our two by six fascia. We have our wooden roof trusses. These are shed trusses basically that are going there and they're going up to <coughs> the green box. And you'll know what I mean by green box if you watched the last video. Um, and just like the other truss for the little shed roof, you can see here's our weather resistant barrier. And we're showing that truss coming in. And that has all its web members. We have our two by six on the outside. This in case here is a five and 12, not the eight and 12 that we had up above, but it has all of the different overhangs, two foot, one foot, 10 and a half. A lot of this is <coughs> the same. But the important part on this drawing is 
the truss supplier to provide the required hangers. They need to be able to engineer these hangers because we did not want to penetrate our green box. And like I said, go check out the uh, last episode and uh, you'll know what I mean when I'm talking about the green box. So that's the uh, lower truss. Look at a few photos here. Um, this is the actual finished roof and I gotta tell you, I mean, when you look at that photo, and I remember being somewhat in awe when we were out there, this was easily one of the best metal roof installations I have ever seen. These guys were just beyond craftsmen. When you look at that, that is so clean. And, you know, the things that I'm looking for there is you want to make sure that, you know, we have the weather lap, we're weather lapping there. Um, you can see all of this stuff. They have their flashing coming up that will then counter flash over the top. We have our 8-inch rake in there. But, man, these guys, they just did a superb job. And you can see here, like when I said we're right on the water, you can see how close the water is there. But, man, what a beautiful job. Standing seam, metal roof. Um, here we're looking at it from the underside. You can see we had some perimeter trim, but we did this all in a natural fur. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and notice we do have some white trim here because that's where we'll have our crown molding and stuff tie into that. But uh, man, that fur. Absolutely beautiful against the uh, white trim. So, anyways. I think that was that the last one. Yeah, that was the last one. So, that's our roof framing plan. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Again, you know, roof framing plans, I would say that they're probably not the most exciting part. Um, I actually do really enjoy drawing a roof framing plan um, because it's this pretty uh, heavy 3D thing that we have to impose on a 2D piece of paper. So um, it does have you thinking on, I mean, this one here is very simple roof plan, but I've done some where, man, you really have to do a few sections and such to really make sure um, that that roof framing plan is dialed in and um, working well for you. But anyways, I'm Steve Basic Architect. This is my Vibe Board. Yeah. Go check them out. I think it's VibeUSA.com. Go check them out. I mean, it is a game changer. If I wasn't doing these presentations for you, I would probably still have one. I love this thing. Um, we use it for a whole bunch of things, but... Uh, let me know in the comments. If you uh, like it, want to get one, need help, let me know. Um, we'll see what we can do. Um, I'm a contributor to the Build Show. 200 plus videos of mine. We have well over, um, we have 14 contributors, and I'm guessing we have probably 2K to 3,000 videos in total across the board there and you know the beauty of that is it's all free go check it out buildshownetwork.com um if you're looking for more i team up with my good friends jake and peter on the unbuilder podcast one of the contributors there um, and if you're still looking for more steve basic architect on instagram steve basic on linkedin steve basic architect on facebook on tiktok and of course you found me here, and you know what I'm going to say. Go tell all your friends. Tell them they should be watching. Tell them you're learning an immense amount of information. And smash that subscribe button. Until next time. You guessed it. Long live our building.